Okay, so as I said before, a server can be just a normal computer like you've got. Most likely, it's going to be a specialized piece of hardware without the monitor, without any fancy graphics cards. It's just going to be mainly used for processing the web server, which is most likely Apache, uh, server side programs like PHP. And it can also run executables like C++ and also Java programs, which we'll show you uh, soon. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sh show you what happens when you type in a web address uh, into your favorite oops, server, into your favorite web browser. Okay. So if this is your computer. Oh man, this blue tech is not working. Ah. Sorry, yeah, I use quite a shitty microphone. Cost five pounds from the bargain bin. I'm kind of holding it up by blue tech and my calculator. Okay, so there's your computer. And um, this will be your server machine. Yeah, my brother actually um, designs server cabinets for your information. Um, and he, uh, so the stuff that actually holds the server machine. So one company might have like 30 uh, server machines in a rack. And you'd be quite annoyed if one of your servers just suddenly shut down. And you lost all your information if, if, if there was some sort of crash or something. So I remember him talking about he had to go to Bristol and go on an earthquake testing machine to see how his, um, well, how him and his colleagues, um, how the rats dealt with in certain earthquake conditions. So that was quite interesting, nevertheless. Here's your server, and um, this is going to be located somewhere in the cloud that is the internet. I think it's mostly, mostly drawn like a little cloud, here. and most likely you've got a router. Uh, it's connected to the cloud of the internet, and then that's connected to. Uh, Server machine located could be anywhere. As long as it's connected to the internet, you can put it wherever you want. Um, so, if I've logged on to uh, Maxthon, the best browser there is. No, I'm not joking. I tried it a little bit, it wasn't that good. I need to stick with Firefox. And. So if I type the bestest website there is, jmonkeyengine.org, and click enter, I want jmonkeyengine.org to appear on my web browser. But how does that even happen? Well, what does happen underneath? Well, first of all, it's got to translate the jmonkeyengine.org into an IP address, because that's how information is uh, found on the internet, is each computer has an IP address. So first of all, I need to find that IP address. And uh, the reason that that is the case is because people didn't want to learn IP addresses of companies. They just wanted to be able to type in a name and have that translated into an IP address. That's done by the domain name server, which it's just a big long database of uh, translations from the name of a website to the IP address. They're not all stored in the same place, but you'll have a default DNS server. And if the address you want to translate isn't stored there, it will look elsewhere in the different uh, DNS servers. And then your router may cache it, so uh, when you want to go onto the same web page you've been on before, it will not need to 
look for the IP address again, it will just use the one it's stored. And once it's found that, it will then be sent along different routers. So it will first be sent to yours, and it will say, oh, I want whatever the IP address is of the JLink engine. And it will say, go to that website. And by default, it's going to fetch the index, uh, either HTML file or PHP file or whatever server architecture Jimmykin uses. I know it has PHP uh, somewhere for their forum system. It might be for the main page, I'm not sure. Um, and it will go to the Jmonkey Engine website or the server machine and it will retrieve that uh, in essence HTML. That's what you're going to be sent back. The server machine may do other stuff like go to a database, um, it will fetch the images one at a time to send back to the browser but in the end the actual file you get is a HTML file and loads of images and other multimedia stuff like Flash and whatever. Um, so to get from here to here the uh, routers have to hop from one router to another. Your ISP will have loads of big fat fiber optic networks in which to send information very fast across the internet and uh, hops from router to router until it gets to the one that uh, the server is located in. It will then be sent to the web server which is most likely Apache. That's the most common web server there is. Um, it's used by about 50 or 60 percent of all websites out there. Uh, there's also ISS, which is the Windows one. There might be one for Mac, I don't care. And um, that's responsible for fetching the files on the network. Well, not on the network, on the web server. So it will just be a program. So by, by pretending that my computer right now is a, a server, the I've got a patch installed, but CBA to show you. It's just a program, and it runs commonly on port 80. I don't think I've really discussed ports, but um, when information's coming into a computer, it finds out what program wants that information by the port number. Every every networked program or game runs on a port, a TCP or I or UDP port or uh, usually they, just, they both run on the same port number and TCP and UDP use the same one. Um, but web, web pages use the TCP and the HTTP protocol, which is just a data layer inside TCP. Um, and one of the things I had trouble understanding was once it will once I requested the web page, so I have the IP address of the server, how does the when it when the server sends the information back, how does the router know to send it to my computer? Because um the IP address is that the server sends the information to is the IP address of the router, not the IP address of my machine. So how does my machine know to give it to me? And that's done through network address translation or NAT. And so your router will be the default gateway, which means any information your computer sends, it, the IP address is of the server machine, but the MAC address is of the router. And that sends it to your, so any information you send goes straight to your router. And then this trick I only just learned recently. The way it gets the information back to your machine is that it changes the, the source port number and then stores that. And when the information comes back, it finds what port um, number it changed and corresponds to that uh, IP or MAC address of your local machine. Um, yeah, I think I've badgered on enough. Talked about so yeah. Oh no, there was one thing I wanted to show. 
the ultimate max that I'm not sure what it's all about. So max on is apparently the uh, most HTML5 compliant web browser, only for Android and Windows. So Mac users do not get the privilege. And yeah, it's very fast. So I'm going to go on to jmakeengine.org. There you go. And one trick that you can learn now is that you can specify the port number in which you want to uh, send the HTTP packet by specifying a colon and then the, num the port number. And that shows to me that JMonkey Engine runs. The, the uh, web server runs on the standard port number of 80. There's also port 8080, which some servers may run on. But one thing I found out when I typed that into the JMonkey engine, I guess this cool um, Hudson dashboard which shows me all about the build history of the JMonkey engine. So yeah, I found that by accident. And if you just type in a different port number, you're going to not get uh, yeah so I'll get a denied browsing request because um, there's no program that I'm allowed to access on the jmonkey engine uh, server that runs on port 23 it's just not letting me do it is the uh, root of firewall is going to block any requests that happens. Okay, uh, wait, someone's phoning me, I'm just going to pause for a second. Okay, I can't really remember what I was talking about. I think I'll just go through how different port numbers don't work. Um, they're not really visible from the outside world through a web browser. Uh, through like the HTTP protocol. Um, so yeah, I think before we discuss uh, networking in the JMonkey engine, I'm going to show you one more thing, and that's um, client-side cheating-ish, uh, if you will. Kind of changing variables in memory before you send data to the server. Um, I'll do that now.